Hello, my name is Dalton High, and this is EDL 856 School and Community Relations. First of all, I just want to say that my camera is not working, so I'm going to provide plenty of pictures so you kind of get a face with the voice, um, and we will get started from there. So just a little bit about me as we get to the personal and professional. Um, I was born and raised in Clay Center, Kansas, graduated from there in 2013. Um, went to Dodge City Community College out in southwest Kansas and played basketball for two years before I transferred to 4A State and finished my degree in K-12 through teaching and coaching and secondary education. Um, I married my high school sweetheart. We've been together for 11 years and married for four. Um, actually, tomorrow is our four-year anniversary date, and we just had our first child about 10 months ago, Tate James. Um, just by the, you know, the first two slides, family is very important to me and I put FOE, family over everything, you know, that does, tells a lot about who I am as a person and, and where I get my motivation from um, when it comes to the professional world and, and my drive every day. So family is very important to me and I've been blessed with a great support system and an awesome family. Professionally, like I said, I graduated from Dodge City Community College with my associates, um, went on to Fort Hayes, earned my bachelor's. Uh, I got my first teaching job at Lynn Public Schools, which is a K through 12 um, school, 1A school, about 30, 20 miles north of Clay Center, where I'm currently at now. I taught there for two years. Um, while I was there, I earned a master's degree in sports administration in HHP, um, and then transfer. Well, didn't transfer, but got a job back at my alma mater at Clay Center Community High School, and I just completed my third year there. Um, I coach. I'm the head girls basketball coach. I coach football, um, powerlifting, and I run our summer weights program. So the biggest piece of professional um, information for me is this is the final three classes I have to finish my um, non-degree earning admin endorsement. So I'm looking for uh, that final piece to kind of elevate my education and, and get me into the building leadership opportunity. So looking forward to that and looking forward to learn with you all. What multiple forms of communication strategies for reaching a variety of stakeholder communities do you currently use? So with our school, you know, the biggest thing is our school email. Um, we have a school district-wide calendar that is posted, and um, our, our community is able to get a hold of that and be added to it just so they see everything as we do um, as educators. So that is very helpful as well. Our handbooks that we hand out, the social media is a huge platform for us, um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we all our accounts are linked to our high school, so they're all professional accounts. But that's how we reach a lot of our um, a lot of our community members use those platforms. So we are very big on those as well. Uh, we have phone calls, text messages that are automated that send to the whole district, um, and then paper communication as well as our school paper at the high school. Um, we do a school paper, and it's kind of more of an informative deal for our high school events, current events, and that's sent out to the community as well. So those are the different ways of communication methods that we use um, at USD 379. So importance of introductions, you know, just going through uh, the three different articles we read there early on, you know, when introducing, when, in, when introducing yourself, you know, explain your why, not your what. Everybody has a title but that doesn't explain who you are or why you do what you do. Um, tell your story, be compelling. You know, people will relate to that. Uh, if I were just to say, my name is Dalton Heist and I'm a teacher and a coach, you know, that's pretty generic and doesn't really give uh, much room for feedback or for people to interact. Tell the people the problem you exist to solve. What is the purpose of, you know, your title? You know, what, why are you that title? so to speak. And, you know, for me, I think that, you know, when it comes to asking myself why I do what I do, you know, I'm an advocate for our students, for our community, and for our, uh, the people that I serve and, and teach and help every day. So self-reflection and self-compassion need to be present. You know, one of my favorite quotes is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I know we're talking about introductions, but compassion and the ability to relate and be approachable is something that is huge in our industry, especially when it comes to introducing and, um, you know, the multiple facets that, that people see us in, you know, they need to understand that we're humans as well. 
Unforgettable introduction. State what you want to be known for. Be a problem solver. Ask friends and colleagues for your input. Um, you know, like it goes back to self-reflection and self-compassion. You know, you've got to be able to be willing to be open um, to receive positive feedback from others. And, uh, you know, you want to leave that impression positive and open-ended so that it, it invites um, some feedback and more communication. Be, be vulnerable, be honest, and reverse, resist reverting back to introduction styles, past introduction styles. For example, you know, my name is Dalton Heist. I teach and coach at Clayson Community High School. That's great. But who is Dalton Heist and who is he beyond the educator and the, t and the coach? You know, what really matters with Karen Gross's article, I really enjoyed, you know, knowing your surroundings, who, what, where. Her example was her husband in the um, ICU unit with the cardiologist who said he was the heart doctor. You know, I think it's especially important for us as administrators, you know, and as educators to know who we're talking to, you know, know what the context is and where this is taking place and know that those people probably already have a predetermined concept or, or predetermined thought of who you are. So knowing, you know, giving yourself a little bit of preparation and background of who you're going to be meeting and introducing and approaching, you know, is something that can definitely help you. Uh, consequences of first impressions can be substantial. You know, you don't get a second opportunity at a first impression. And I think that, you know, using these three articles that we talked about to kind of get yourself out of that box, you know, out of the comfort zone and, and really explain who you are and why you are what you are um, is is that vulnerability point and putting yourself out there um, and allowing allowing for response for feedback from the other my title is not who i am it's what i do you know i am not just defined as a teacher and a coach i'm you know much more than that and when we introduce ourselves to others you know they need to see that and know that does our do we follow a set district strategic policy for community effectively you know it's not as not specifically addressed in our handbook so to speak but every year you know in our in surfaces early on our new teacher meetings you know we are very heavy on communication the different the different sources we use for communication how it's to be handled throughout the throughout the school year with parents and all this different things so communication is something we stress early and often um, and like I mentioned in the last one, we, we utilize a multitude of communication methods. Our district-wide announcements go out via text, call, email. Those are automatically generated. So if it's something that needs to be sent out in a mass email, we do that as well. Um, automatically generated texts and calls as well um, for the entire district. So that is one of the ways, especially if we need to get information out quick. Uh, for example, we had a couple, we had a tornado warning and we had to get that out to the, the parents. Um, so we generated a, a text and an email and a call for those parents to know what the situation was at the high school. Um, <clears throat> specifically for our high school, we utilize more of the social media platforms, um, which are tied directly to our accounts, which I mentioned earlier. But for us, that's just, you know, kind of adapting with the times, knowing that a lot of our students, a lot of their family members want to see those pictures, you know, they want to see the visuals, so we use we utilize those platforms as well, um, and they are tied to our administration. So it's no personal um, accounts; it's all you know professional through the school district. Emails, Google Forms, and other um, you know Google Sheets, Google Docs, all those all those assets are utilized to communicate within our district. Um, you know, and we share those throughout our our school emails so that is another way that we communicate effectively through um, throughout our district you know just here at the end how this <clears throat> standard correlated you know it directly correlates to the science standard as we were able to research communication methods present our findings using oral written and digital means on top of that we were able to reflect on our school practices you know with our staff students and community you know why I think this is relevant because communication is obviously of utmost importance. You're always going to have um, questions and people asking uh, what's going on. And I think it's important to be prepared early and to, to over communicate, be as tr transparent as possible and to, uh, you know, give the community what they need. And, and even more so, like I said, over communicate, 
and be be that advocate. That is all I have for today, and I appreciate your guys' time, and I'm looking forward to learning more through this module and through this class, and uh, thank you.